It's a time warp without parallel. You walk into Scott's hut and you are transported to the year 1912 in a way that is quite impossible anywhere else in the world. Everything is there. Commercial product, tin food, clothing, the bench where Wilson conducted his scientific experiments with the glass test tubes and so on. The bunks, the table. Barely 100 years ago, the first footprints were felt on the frozen continent. No event in human history has a testament as vivid as the exploits of the great Antarctic explorers. The names of Robert Falcon Scott and Ernest Shackleton are writ large in the legend of Antarctica. The only physical heritage of Scott and Shackleton that still remains are, are the huts still there on Ross Island. Uh, they've survived. The huts are full of the supplies and equipment which the expedition used. And they constitute, I think, this immensely rich and powerful legacy of just a remarkable time, the golden age of Antarctic exploration. Scott's and Shackleton's expedition bases, together with Karsten Borchgrevink's huts at Cape Adair, the first building on the continent, and Sir Edmund Hillary's hut at Scott Base, are cared for by New Zealand's Antarctic Heritage Trust. The Trust is a not-for-profit charity and includes representatives from the governments of Great Britain, United States of America, Ireland and New Zealand. With the full support of the Antarctic Treaty Nations, it exists to conserve these remarkable sites for current and future generations and to inspire people with the stirring legacy of adventure, discovery and endurance. Recognising that extensive work was required to save this exceptional heritage, the Trust created the Ross Sea Heritage Restoration Project. Launched in 2002 by Her Royal Highness Princess Anne, it's a long-term, multi-site, year-round operation, conserving the expedition buildings and their extensive artefact collections. Since 2006, international teams of specialists have worked year-round in Antarctica. Over winter, conservators treat artefacts at the Trust Laboratory at New Zealand's Scott Base, and in summer, specialist teams work on site, conserving the historic building fabric and artefacts. As the world leader in cold climate heritage conservation, the Trust works to exacting heritage standards. Already a major program of conservation at Shackleton's only Antarctic base at Cape Royds has been completed. The building together with 6,100 individual objects have been conserved. In the process, Shackleton's forgotten whiskey was rediscovered. Such a fantastic discovery. We ended up with three boxes of whiskey and two boxes of brandy. Uh, a very su successful outcome. At Cape Evans, a five-year program of conservation on Captain Scott's iconic base has also been completed. We have weatherproofed and made structurally sound the building. There's been some major issues to work through, mainly um, snow and ice build-up. We've already treated several thousand artefacts from the extensive collection on site and uh, with, with a dedicated, passionate team of uh, international conservators, we're making great progress. They're working 12 months a year and often in challenging conditions. When they come to us, they're in pretty bad condition. Tins are often corroding and the labels are very dirty and stained. This is before we've treated the object. So we aim to clean the products and to um, repair the labels. Um, this is a tin that was treated a couple of weeks ago. The focus now is on the conservation of the continent's first buildings at Cape Adair and Scott's first expedition base at Hut Point. Artefact conservation work continues with over 15,000 artefacts in the Trust collection to care for and ongoing building maintenance is required. The Trust welcomes support for its important mission from governments, entities and individuals. Together we are ensuring this extraordinary heritage survives. Please do what you can to help the Trust conserve this site and other explorers' huts elsewhere on the continent. 
in this, one of the harshest places on earth.